I'm putting you in this, not like any other committees, which is very common. Once you get the empowerment, you start throwing your weight around. Yeah. No, you got to win the police and win the public both. Every police officer had to bring his own furniture when he was posted there. Can you imagine? Wow. We told them to take all the furniture home. We fully furnished it. Even 2000, it was not good times we had. We had the worst times. No, 92, military operations. Kidnapping maximum, mm. three, three, four, four abductions a day. Mm. Children being kidnapped, businessmen being kidnapped, all right? And then I started getting calls from businessmen. You are a businessman. Your CPLC has been made on our request and mm. all that. And you are coming and hitting us only. Mm. I said, I'm hitting out at a criminal. That my stolen car is at the police station with my number plate. And there's somebody sitting inside with the SP. Mm. And I went inside and said, Sir, this, who's come in this car? My stolen car is there. Please seize it. And this man sitting in front of the SP said, There's not anybody born to even try to touch it. And then well, I was the last person to meet him. Right? You were the last person to yes. meet him? He, from my office, he went. I asked him, Where are you going? He says, there. I said, You know the people? No, there's been something fixed. I said, Don't go. Hmm. You're not supposed to. And you call him, he's a Peer Jelani, mm. a very famous man. Mm. If he was a famous man, I would know him. Mm. Nobody knows him. Hello and welcome everyone to Digitales. My name is Fezan Sayyid and today I have someone. If you live in Karachi, you've definitely heard of the CPLC. The Citizens Police Liaison Committee. CPLC ने जितना काम किया इस शहर की सिक्योरिटी के लिए इस शहर को महफूज रखने के लिए ये सबको पता है जो यहाँ रहते हैं और सी के पीछे एक नाम है जो सब जानते हैं द फाउंडर ऑफ सी पी एल सी ही इज़ ऑल्सो द चेयरमैन ऑफ टी पी एल होल्डिंग्स ही ऑल्सो इज द को चेयरपर्सन ऑफ बैतुल सुकून विच इज़ ए फ्री कैंसर हॉस्पिटल प्रोवाइडिंग कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट एंड ही इज द फाउंडिंग ट्रस्टी ऑफ द पना ट्रस्ट फॉर वेमेन Jamil Yusuf Saab, how are you today? Fine, thank you. Thank you for taking the time out and joining us. Um, I want to start first, and I know you've touched on this many times, but I want to hear the story again because a lot of people may be forgetting that when CPLC was made, this was back in '89. Karachi, I remember, was a very, very difficult place to live. I was probably about 10, 11 years old. I remember that there was a curfew in 90, 91, 92. Kidnappings for ransom was very prevalent. And you were a businessman. You know, it's not like you came from law enforcement. It's not like you came from bureaucracy. You were a businessman who took this initiative. What made you start or jump into this particular initiative? Um, actually, the best part is I didn't start it. Uh, the beauty of it is we had one good person. That was Governor Fakhruddin J. Ibrahim, who was appointed the governor by the Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto at the first tenure after she came back. Okay. And... Uh, he was the first governor and the only governor to be given a citizen's reception at the Bhagi Jinnah, you know, by all businessmen, industrialists. It was a big crowd of about five, seven hundred people in 1989 at that time. And they were showed their concern, like you said, you know, law and order was getting bad, you know, kidnappings, strikes, murders, you know, it was getting... The Sindhi Mohajir battle yeah, was started. Yeah, battle, off, battle, yeah. battle by everybody, all the three parties, mm. you know, Jamaat Islami, People's Party, and MQM, all mm. three. <laughs> and this is right after the uh, the martial law had just ended after Zia's time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Immediately after that, so they were all having a field day. Right. Uh, okay. And uh, they showed the concern, and Prakashin Saab assured them, okay, "Okay, let me think about it." And uh, and he called over uh, Abdul Qadir Siddiqui Saab, who was the law secretary, another very fine person. You see, when you have good people whose only object is to do good governance and good things, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes a difference. Even bureaucrats. Some of those bureaucrats have been excellent. And that time, even I would say that the IG was Khawar Zaman Saab, one of the best IGs. DIG was Mr. Afzal Shigri, another one of wonderful uh, police officer, and they had a think tank what to do, and the commissioner was Javed Ashraf Saab, another very enlightened officer, okay. So, as a team, they all sat down, they said, okay, let's form a citizen's body, we'll give them some empowerment. First, it was just a commissioner's notification, all right, to oversee four police stations. So, it was his idea of setting up CPLC. I used to stay in PSHS, okay. 
My name was given by Fakhud Insab's very good friend, Roshan Ali Bimji, who was the owner of um, the top man of Eastern Federal Union Insurance Company. Mm -hmm. He gave him, you know, you asked him for some names. So my name was given and subsequently my co-chief, who was Mr. Nazim Haji, his name was also given by uh, Mr. Roshan Ali Bimji. Okay. So these four committees were formed and uh, Adhishar Kawaji was in that, Mohsen Tayyabali was in that. So these were the type of people uh, chosen. In Clifton Police Station, I was chosen Ferozabad, then Badrabad and one site when there used to be labor problem. So site association mm. also was used for making a committee there. So you made, so I want to understand, they took citizens from different parts yeah, of the city six, six. and they assigned them to a police station. Yeah, six, six people. Six people and, and, and the job was to be a liaison. A liaison between the police and the citizens who are in problem. Okay, they may have, but the notification that was given even by the commissioner's order was very powerful. It gave us empowerment of about 10, 12 things. But Fakhruddin Saab also gave us a talk. It's not the matter of empowerment. It's the amount of work you want to do for it. Okay, I'm putting you in this, not like any other committees, which is very common. Once you get the empowerment, you start throwing your weight around. Yeah. No. You got to win the police and win the public both. So it's a very difficult task, creating that balance. Because Absolutely. there's a hate amongst both of them. Right? Absolutely. And you have to do it on your own strength and money. So the government is not giving you a rupee in this. So right. this was a wonderful thing. So it was a volunteer position. It's a volunteer position. Everything. We said, fine. I mean, I was given Ferozabad police station. Uh, and uh, we thought, let's come on. Let's do something and make a change. Ferozabad police station is an affluent area. Okay. And the sad part was that there was policemen's quarters, houses right next to the police station. Huge four floors. Okay. No. Living in an affluent area. In place of gas, the policemen's wives used to burn wood. Can really? You in the house, in the apartments, okay. Water, buckets from the ground floor to the mm. fourth floor, okay. Wow. Now, when they start doing this in an affluent area where we are mo moving around in Mercedes and mm. Coronas and Accords and mm. all that, all right? And you expect them to have compassion for you? Absolutely not. They can cut an FIR, they can hang you, okay? Mm -hmm. See the empowerment, what you're against, right? We put up a board at the police station. We first redid the police station. We changed the window panes, we brought curtains there. Every police officer had to bring his own furniture when he was posted there. Can you imagine? Wow. There was no furniture also owned by the, by the, girls, by the state. We told them to take all the furniture home. We fully furnished it. And you know who furnished it? Our wives. They came there, they mm. furnished it, put curtains, put indoor plants. We humanized the police station. We put a rockery outside, we made a beautiful garden area. We made a reception at the entrance lobby. I mean, there's a lobby before you go in, okay? The British days, the window panes were painted. Mm. It was basically to scare you when you went, to give mm. you the fear of the law. Mm. But the fear of the law was for whom? The innocent citizens. Mm. The, the criminals, criminals were, were friendly. <laughs> the criminals were very friendly with them. Right. So they had no problem. Right. So it scared the citizens, not the criminals. Right. Okay. Lockup was bad, you know. Yeah. We humanized the lockup also. We made a toilet there and, you know, made sure that there's, you know, enough ventilation, fans, redid the record rooms, put in there, brought in some. So that really humanized the police. And for the families, what did we do? We cleaned up their garden, you know, there were cattle there, dogs there. We told them, get, take out everybody, right? We made nice playing area for the children, swings, slides. We caught the Karachi water board. We told them, look, you need to have a tank here, an overhead tank. Mm -hmm. You need to provide that to these people. Okay? See, the basics were just missing. The basics. Basics. The bad living conditions. You are dehumanizing them. Even the animals in defense live better. The dogs and wow. the cats live a better life than these people were And living. when you brought this change into their lives, how yeah, did it change their mindset? It won them over. And we threw a reception at the Rangoonwala Hall and we invited Fakhruddin Ibrahim to visit. He, he was the first governor to visit a police station. Okay, When he came there and he saw the change in the... The DIG praised it and the IG praised it. Says Fakhruddin Saab, this is the first time a committee has been made uh, which has come here not to rule over us, 
ओके फर्स्ट टू असिस्ट अस इन विन अस ओवर ओके देखिए ब्यूरोक्रेसी इज नॉट यू हैव इनकम टैक्स यू गॉट एफ बी आर यू गॉट एजुकेशन वाई देर इज नो कमिटी इन एनी ऑफ दीज हेल्थ आर दे इनफ प्रॉब्लम इन दोज थ्रोपड़ी अलाउज इट It's a bureaucracy is so strong they don't allow it. Mm. I give credit to the police, the Iraqi, for allowing this to be put. We became a watchdog over them. Let's not forget it. Mm. Whatever it was, right? Then we went to Rangoonwala Hall. We made a list of some police officers who had done some brilliant work. You mm. know, some had caught some rape victims. This thing saved rape victims. Somebody had rescued some children who were kidnapped. Things like that. You know? so, so, so recognition of their services. Recognition. But what did we do? We gave them a bouquet of flowers, and a letter of thanks. That's, That's it. it, and a standing applause. And what did it do in return? And their remark was, "Had you given us a hundred thousand rupees? Now I'm talking of 1989. In place of this, it would not be equal." This is the first time people stood up and applauded them. Hmm. And with the commissioner seeing the home secretary, the chief secretary. See the difference it made. Okay, mm. it passed the message. Ki you can make a difference, right? You can do it. Okay. Then immediately the law secretary was called by the governor, who was very happy with this. He was a noble man, Fakhruddin Ibrahim. Even though somebody told him that, sir, what he wanted to make the CPLC, he says, look, I would like to have an office of CPLC in the governor's house. Okay, that's how it started. Now imagine, first September, CPLC is made. On in March, okay, March somewhere around nineteen twenty nineteen ninety, right? Just within within six seven months, okay. I always wondered how that office ended up in the governor house. Yes, because Fakhruddin Ibrahim wanted it there. All right, March first week it was established at the governor house. He spoke to the Prime Minister Benazir that I want to do this. Mm-hmm. Law and order is the prerogative of the chief minister, not the governor. Correct. Okay, so partly somebody told him this is an unconstitutional thing. So he said, when you do a noble deed and a good task, lock the constitution in the cupboard for some time. Mm. Okay? Let's see how it goes. Mm. Okay, as long as it does good to the humanity and service, let it be in its noble context. He asked the prime minister. I don't know. It was a blessing of Allah, me. I should say. Yeah. Mm. She agreed. Mm. Hz. Hz. Hasan was the interior minister. Mm. He agreed. Aftar Shaban Mirani was the subsequent chief minister. Mm. He was happy and agreed. So it was wow. not only uh, us. It was these people, all That, these people, mm. who who were involved in this goodness, right? Mm. And Prime Minister Benazir, till the end, she had great confidence in us. Mm. And subsequent other leaders, we saw a lot of governors come in, a lot of chief ministers, a lot of prime ministers. You know, one after the other. And Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, everybody loved our role, being neutral, being mm. businessmen, not interfering, not political. This was established at the governor house at that time. And within six months, you had made significant progress. Exactly. And Abdul Qadir Siddiqui, being mm. the law change, he amended the police rules. Now it has made a legal. And the assembly approved it. And so now, what was the official role then of the CPLC? The, the same charter to be to our parts, FIR, lodge FIR, investigation. This, you know, uh, see if no innocent man is there in the lockup, things like that, right? So right. So even today, if I want to go cut an FIR for a case, then I see resistance at a thana level. I can come to the yes, CPLC. Yes, yes, yes. And I can get the FIR. I lodge. don't know how active they are now, but mashallah, say in my time, you know, when Shoaib Sadr became the uh, I, uh, DIG of Karachi and then subsequent IG, mm-hmm. another great person, okay, great man. He gave the empowerment to lodge FIRs to CPLC at their office. He deputed police officers who were called police complaint officers. Mm. He gave a new title to them, but they're sitting in CPLC. Okay, so if anybody came and gave a letter that I went to the police station, this is what I gave the F. It was not lodged. Okay, mm. they, he would take it, stamp it, send that letter to the home secretary, send it to the IG, send it to the police station. The police station would make the replicate. Uh, FIR, send it to us in the government house. We would deliver it by hand to the complainant at uh, to his house. Mm. Wow. If anybody had a complaint against any police officer for any illegal gratification or this thing, you know, in those days they used to ask you when you used to come back from Sea View with a lady or with a mm. girl, Nikanama. where is your Nikanama? Mm. 
why is all that stopped hmm acha i didn't stop. realize it was cplc yes yes when it came here we hmm. were very tough about it you know hmm. all that stopped when your car was stolen the hmm. insurance company wanted a final report yes. okay we stopped that for every final report there should be a cost of 10000 15000 rupees what hmm. final report hmm. i have insured the car yeah. the car is stolen it's not been found yeah <laughs> this is the certificate is not we found you give me the this thing what find there nothing is closed yeah mr bhutto was hanged after so many years of the fir yeah so firs are not closed yeah. it's an open document and the insurance company takes it in writing from you the car is found they will get it right. okay that's it that's character certificate simple thing to make a passport for any foreign travel you needed a character certificate for that you have to bribe them You see that this was the irritants that the public faced. Mm. We stopped it, okay. But still, there were some people, you know, that they used to give us the application. We used to send the letter. The police officer used to contact that family very quietly. Okay, you applied for this. Okay, we'll give it to you. They used to give them the money. When we came to know about this, okay, for one or two cases, we called them. I said, "You went there, the police station. Now you got a call and." We went. you didn't have the patience to wait for us to send it to you by post mm. okay how much did you give mm. so i gave 2000 3000 i said all right now send the balance 20000 okay mm. <laughs> to us because previously you all used to pay that much right now that is things being given to you free of cost yeah with the help of the top hierarchy of the police you're still paying them right this is the guna that allah talks about right when things are not done and you paid for expertise you are not helpless that i can understand that but here it's getting done but here we are giving it to yeah. you we're sending it to your house what yeah. do you want okay so character certificates all these things slowly slowly these were the things which we giving to the citizens then kidnapping for ransom it increased that really became a thing back in the late 90s i think yeah, mid late to late 90s, 90s. yeah late, huh? late. what was the reason for that where did that originate from the kidnapping for ransom innovation by the criminals they used to kidnap people uh, cows and goats and all that right this was in rural areas yeah first the kidnappings were rural area it was not a hobby of the cities okay but the kidnapping for uh, livestock was never for ransom was it it, it was, was it, it was, was for ransom yeah yeah so i'll take your cow you'll give they me 10000 the, yeah they used to take money for it and then return the cattle now taking a cattle and making it walk was very difficult <laughs> yeah. you know so even the kidnappers were having a problem with that you know <laughs> so then they started stopping buses and they unloaded the passengers and then took them he said yeah this is good the human being walks fast yeah. he's obedient <laughs> there's no problem we can travel faster you yeah. can go into the forest they was it was a, it was a pure logistics and administrative reason yeah. but again a bus passenger won't give much money right that's then true then they tested out the city okay oh so there was a proper process that they got it from was, the rural yes, to yes, this yes 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 is a beautiful process yeah went through how it, long right? did this take you to know the doubts you know, yeah, yeah. he was kidnapped taken yeah, yeah. into the mountains yep. you know of gadap and all that and kept there it was a very big scandal big things you know yeah a uh, dr rizvi had helped the daud family he was very highly respected because dr rizvi was a eye specialist and he used to set up eye camps in these interiors in these, okay got it so they all respected him very highly so the dauds involved him okay to please assist and he went and became the go between which was led to a very sad thing misunderstanding whatever it was you know and he got so once i'm released okay with his intervention and all that but it was to for some amount of money because those kidnappers right. they don't believe any other thing all right yeah. they don't believe in friendship okay they respected they took his guarantee released it and then asked for the money okay but there was money to there be was paid. there was of course sadly and rizvi sab did an intelligent thing he said okay i them it was very nominal sum and all that which unfortunately you know there are other people also who give bad ideas to people mm. they convince the dawa that this was i think rizvi sahab was involved rizvi mm. sahab was an eye specialist of the royal family of saudi arabia mm. for him to be involved in taking 5 lakhs or 10 lakh rupees was mm. just nonsense even the thought of it right he treated thousands of patients free of cost he conducted he was the top eye surgeon of of pakistan at that time right when being recognized by the saudi mm. families you know mm. and the arab unfortunately you know he got arrested also something like that he was very hurt very offended 
then and slowly slowly his health became bad he took it so much to his heart mm. that he subsequently you know died and it was most unfortunate but that's how it was you know and so these guys came in from cattle they came into the city they started picking up then things. they started picking up how did you how did you would in all of this before you answer the question you were always a khoja businessman like you said yeah yeah right? to me on the yeah. we were khoja businessmen you know these mehmans this is khoja not your domain boys. no no they don't in even fact, work in fact mehmans bojas khoris this is not their domain at all not domain why at did all. you set foot into this they what never, they are never friends with the law enforcing agencies correct oh, in fact that's we just had uh, someone on before he said like, the only time before i'd ever been to a thana was to take permission to have an event on the street <laughs> yeah you know so you can well imagine you know uh, working like that so why did you decide to enter this particular i didn't fuck with in ibrahim bestowed that faith in us okay? right. and we had that passion of doing social work right right in, right. in our community we are very strong fair enough Mayman's, so it comes from Bori's, the community Kojas, yeah. these are ismailis they are all very very strong the communities are very strong True. there's no doubt about it so it is that community mindset that inspired you to sort of take yeah. this yeah. outside of the community yeah so we we started doing this and you know so when you discovered ki ye these uh, criminals uh, were moved, migrated or sort of graduated from livestock to humans and then sort of senior well respected businessmen what how did you crack it down this was this was somewhere around april may right uh, of 1990 to cpsc governor house had just started right. right but before that also there was one in december a case of saira mansha who was tortured brutally tortured by the by a businessman family you know immediately okay the this time the cpsc was just notified right okay and this is something which happens which just happened in in punjab and all that Correct. Right? by the judges and all that yep. so it's still continuing we caught the case in 1989 it was a very nice interesting case that came to cplc mm. there were two things that came uh, which were remarkable to show you how we won the confidence of the people and the police mm. both it, it see it always has to be that right mm. one the mohalla committees were a tradition of the british days but they were more like touts they were not more like committees mm. they were like acting in between to please both the sides i, I didn't know the mohalla committees were from the british yeah days. yeah it was in the it was in the police the thing <laughs> in the Achha. laws the commissioner's office used to have mohalla committees mm. they were behaving like touts making a deal mm-hmm. giving the money how much to give you know so they okay. were working that way we didn't do that way right we went the other way around right so we had two three important cases in this period why this jump to the governor house mm. why did fakuddin sahab think of going one the function two what we did to the police station three was a saira mancha case mm. a woman child worker 10 11 years old hired by a businessman family and uh, the wife of the businessman went for this religious sermons mm. okay, to punjab okay when she came back she raised the who and cry that her jewelry is missing mm. some jewelry and she blamed this girl mm. for having stolen it all right they brutally tortured the girl called the father they tortured the father also for not making the child confess she did have it she didn't do it mm. you see and uh, they used a hot electric iron in burning her buttocks and cheeks uh and zia al haq and made a new law Mm. I forget the section of 456A or B mm. in which if you uh, uh transgress into the modesty of a woman mm. your entire property and all can get confiscated mm. that was the law so that's they did all this no confession they came and gave the girl and the father to the police station badrabad mm. okay bhai so there was a, no the cplc i was mm. ferozabad mm-hmm. but so because, close by but close by but they were good friends bro right. the sho called me up because he knew i was a bit more bored more mm. forthcoming mm. you know with the officials and and the rangoonwala hall mm. already gave us a very good uh, image to the police right of having you know taken it up so we right. he, he used that for calling me up that sir i we need your help is one says this has happened they brought the person child here she's been brutally tortured and they accuse her of a theft i don't think this is a thing true even if it was true they had no business to do this okay so they were good police officers also so i need your indulgence in handling this matter 
fine. I mean, you know, he told his SP and then he told the DIG. Afsar Shigri, like I said, was mm. the DIG. I spoke to him. Shigri Saab said, please, Jamil Saab, you go ahead. And I think you should be in the front because it's a business community. And you go ahead and do what you like and we will support you. And, you know, mm. let's do justice. Mm. But let me tell you very clearly, uh, your task should be, you want to arrest, do everything, the law is behind you, okay? But if it comes ever for a compensation to be taken, please take it because this family can't stay here anymore. Right. Okay. They are from Faisalabad. They'll have to go back home. How long will they stay here? Right. Court cases will take ages. Okay. Right. And then fine, they'll get convicted. But will that solve their problem? Yeah. They send their children and daughters and all that for 5,000, 10,000 rupees loan. Mm. Okay. These kids come here and work for four or five years. Okay. And when they get, then they, when they're getting married, they go back home with those few utensils, mm. few clothes, worth nothing less than 50,000 rupees. Okay, mm. nothing more than that. And that's it. And mm. they're working free of cost all this time. Because the father is staying in some loan of Bees Pachis rupees. Mm. This is how it is, goes on still, sadly, mm. you know. So we may talk of rights, but there's no rights here. Okay? Mm. We said, fine. We went ahead. We said, we have the house raided. The family had moved out from there. And then I started getting calls from businessmen. You are a businessman. Your CPLC has been made on our request and mm. all that. And you are coming and hitting us only. Mm. I said, I'm hitting out at a criminal, at a crime being committed. At injustice, the exactly. The idea was not to make CPLC to help businessmen who are doing involved in crime and a poor man doing crime should be arrested. Mm. So even the kidnappers are doing the same thing. Right. So should we leave them also, not go after them? Okay. So they kept quiet. The raids continued and it went to hue and cry. They tried to hide. They tried to use influence. They couldn't do anything. They tried to use the maximum influence. But the IG and DIG both were supporting us. The governor was there. Okay. The Prime Minister Benazir came to know there was no interference on the political side. Nobody was willing to make any call for them or anything. And a huge compensation at that time was settled. Okay. Look at that. And, uh, and there was no like any, uh, there was no legal repercussions for that family that was the uh, the perpetrator, the, the perpetrating uh, family. They just compensated the victims. Yeah, it was better because, you know. Uh, they, they didn't have to go behind yeah, bars or anything and, and like that. And that is the time when Zia Aman also started his, you know, uh, right. legal aid thing. Okay. So he also was with me. So he would look at the legal part of it, right? We made the agreements and all that, whatever it was. And that was a revised thing to do at that time. Let me tell you. We talked you know, of sentence and all that. Mm -hmm. What would have happened? Where would they live? Nobody comes forward. Mm -hmm. When these girls get raped in interior and they come here, you go to press club, they make a march and all that. And then what? Where is the victim? Mm -hmm. Who's supporting the victim? Who's financing the victim? Mm -hmm. Who's taking care of the family? Nobody. So and the cases take years. So the compensation is yeah. the better outcome. It's, it is the better if you are giving them heavy. At that time, we took heavy compensation. The child, hmm. that time, this time I discovered an excellent uh, plastic surgeon, Dr. Fez, hmm. whose two sons are now running the United Hospital and that, right? Hmm. A noble man. He was a leading plastic surgeon. He was studying in Medicare, okay? Hmm. I took the girl there. My wife took the girl there. Okay, and he did it free. He did the plastic surgery free for her. Okay, and the hospital, uh, Soel Saab, okay, owner of Medicare, mm -hmm. he gave the room. Everything was done was at no cost. See how the participation, community support started. True. You see, and how that influenced everybody. She was treated. She lived at my house. Okay, the, her father also lived there till we decided this and we told the family. Okay, this compensation, come to the hospital, give it to the family in front of them mm. and please apologize and put your hand on the head of the girl and say you're sorry. This they refused to do. Okay. They said, look, Jamil, what's up? You have said finance and they didn't come before us. The third party was talking because they were in hiding all this time. Chica. Okay. Anyway, so the money was given. So we told the father, okay, fine. I had some good friends in Faisalabad. I said, look, this is the money we have got. Please see a house for them and see a, a horse cart for them. Okay, mm. Because there are Tongas that run there. Right. So the father can Do some, use the Tonga. Yeah. So he's earned money there. 
house is taken care of yeah. and the rest of the money we are putting in a deposit for her to get when she is getting married right this was a compensation that turned around the total economics of the family right, right? the financial need for giving their daughter right. to work for 10000 rupees here they were yeah compensation well, at that time in 1989 was over of 500000 rupees that's a lot that was a lot of money you yeah. could buy a yeah, car for like I months. said, no, yeah. we we got them uh, this thing, a bung- uh, house there, mm. beautiful, nice house, and a tonga, and a nice horse, everything, mm. and they were good people. First of all, they did everything for them, and mm. made sure. So, what was better then? The whole of family course. got changed, right? Yeah, they got to the better. Okay, this was done. Look at Azamia's justice. One thing that this uh, Allah abhors you is uh, your arrogance. That's the worst thing of a person. And these people did not want to apologize. They did not. They did not. I, my small demand is just put your hand on the girl's head. Now everything is finished, right? right. It's done. The police has cooperated. You are lucky. Compensation is given. Everything is done. You are lucky. You have the money you are giving. It's, it's yeah. done. You know, and God has better senses prevailed. No, you will not apologize. Okay, fine. Done. Everything was started off. Within one week, his daughter was driving a car on Shale Faisal and she didn't have a driving license. She was, I think, admitted in medical college or mm. something. And she hit a scooterist who died. Oh, wow. If you give your car to a child who doesn't have a driving license, let me this be a message to everybody, mm. okay? Then the FIR is cut against the parents. They are responsible for the Whatever loss has been done. This happened again in Firozabad area. The mm. first case was Badrava. Mm. Now this was right in the jurisdiction mm. under me. Okay, And this family came to the police station. Now They didn't know the previous case, what mm. it was, nothing. When they came before me and we found out the details of who it was, I mean, I told Allah, why are you testing me so much? Mm. I'm just a businessman, just started with CPLC. Mm. If I'm going to get so many people hating me all right at the <laughs> beginning, how will this organization work? Yeah. Well, has his own silent ways yeah. of helping out and giving credibility. On the contrary, instead of my thinking that, this gave me gave us credibility of honesty, integrity, and you know, mm. justice. The three things that is required to change this country, mm. which is sadly lacking. Okay? Mm. That's where we are suffering. Otherwise, ninety-eight percent of the people are excellent. Mm. They love you. I've left CPLCs over twenty years. Mm. They still love me. Yeah, mm. they still listen to me. I quietly rang up the third person who was in between. I told him, "Look, this has happened. I'm be forced to lodge an FIR. My advice to you is: come meet the family, pacify them, settle with them, and do it immediately." Mm. Because once we lodge the FR, then there's no turning around. Mm. Now, because of this accident, the family being the very rich family, very well known even today, okay, did not advertise the death of their daughter. Neither the Soim was advertised, neither the namaz e janaza was advertised. They were so full of shame because they were center of publicity for 45 days till they took to settle the matter, the previous one. Now, this had just started. Can you imagine what would have happened? So, which daughter of their... Their daughter passed away. Their daughter. In the accident, their daughter... She, their daughter died and the, uh, the scooterist died. Both died. Both died. Okay. But her death doesn't make a difference. She didn't have a driving license. Oh, so that and so they could not properly. So the, so the FIR would be against the parents for of killing course, that of scooterist. Course, of course, of course. It okay, I thought it was sh- only the motor, the scooterist who died. I no, didn't realize no. that both were. Both of them died. But she be gay. And then they quietly settled so fast, you know, to a huge sum, and the family got pacified, and the matter ended there. So you know. That was such a lesson which was became famous in the police circles. Mm. You know, there's two heavy compensations being paid in two cases. You know, really motivated a lot of police officers. Okay, look, if we try to do something right, good can come out of it mm. ultimately. You know, sometimes the law is... That's a very powerful story. Yeah, and know. for the same family to have experienced all of that within and six months? In, within, within a week after. Within a week. 
One week. Unbelievable. After settling one, man. It, it is these are the stories of legends that they say. You yeah. know that change perceptions and scary. Yeah. The f- four police stations out of ninety police stations in Karachi are all to happen here, mm. where Fakhruddin Sahab chose a team. Mm. So the confidence of his choosing, the prime minister became happy. The chief minister felt so, they were all monitoring these cases. And okay. it was this, I think, the this judiciary th- was monitoring. Nobody intervened. And this put CPLC on the map. This just put us CPLC of the credibility, and followed again a very notorious. At the Badrabad police station, one person came running to uh, to me at the Ferozabad police station that my stolen car is at the police station with my number plate, which has been stolen a month back, and there's somebody sitting inside with the SP. Mm. And I went inside and said, "Sir, this who's come in this car? My stolen car is there. Please seize it." And this man sitting in front of the SP said, "There's not anybody born to even s- try to touch it. Mm. So get lost from here unless you want to get killed." Mm. Because he had a Uzi on the table. Mm. At that time, there was a small mm. automatic weapon mm. which was very popular. I was a Uzi. Uzi. It was yeah. called an Uzi. Okay. So he came and he told me the story, and I said. My God, what's happening here? Okay, so I called the Badrabad police members because it was their jurisdiction, and they was a bit scared to intervene and all that. I said, I am coming. Okay, one or two members of you also come because it is essential. I am coming into your jurisdiction. Okay, and I don't think that's proper. Okay, so you better need to be there also. Anyway, I went there, and the gentleman was sitting there, still there. Okay. And I also went and sat down. Of course, I, the SP recognized me, and he respected me and all that. And I said, uh, "Sir, I wouldn't like to take names because I don't want to because these are all now mm-hmm. legends of this thing and stories are well known." And uh, I told him that we need to seize this car immediately. It's a stolen vehicle. This is a stolen number. This is the mm-hmm. FIR number. And uh, basically, it is stolen in Ferozabad area only, so there's no problem. So this man said, "There's nobody born yet who can do it." I <laughs> said, so "You're mistaken. There was nobody born there. Mm. Today, somebody <laughs> is born. So you better behave yourself, and uh, don't be under a misconception mm. that you can drive around yeah. with this car." Anyway, he picked up the Uzi and started walking up. I challenged the SP and all that, and the SP just caught my hand. He said, "Jamil Sahib, I'll get you the car. You want the yeah. car?" I said, no, "I should not leave here." Anyway, he told me, "Jamil Sahib, please keep sitting. It's dangerous." Yeah. He calmed me. He really calmed me up. You will get what you want. Okay. And he went, and the, and the car left, and the SP came back, and the other owner came back. He said, "The car is gone," and I was very furious. As we said, sir, calm down. Have a cup of tea. The car will come back in half an hour. Okay, uh. we'll get the car back for you. Okay. I said, sir, that is not the problem. The car, the car is going to come back. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of trouble for everybody. Okay? Right. All right. But he shouldn't have gone from here. He should have been arrested, said, sir. You'll come to know who he is afterwards. Okay. And when I came to know, he was a leader of a political party, very powerful. And uh, it was—I I wouldn't mind saying it—it it was People's Party, okay. And the very top leader who had the guts and the audacity of even slapping the chief minister. Wow! Uh, at one time, okay. After knowing this, well, the car returned, and uh, it gave me the thought: Why would he want to challenge it? So I thought maybe there were some illegal weapons in the bar, mm. trunk of the car. Mm. If the car would have been seized now. Mm. Uh, They couldn't could transfer the weapons, yeah. so taking half an hour means they went somewhere, dropped mm. the weapons, and uh, you know, mm. left the car there and told the police to pick it up from there. Okay, so it was just didn't just simple adding two plus two. So I wrote out a resignation letter and went to Fakhri Dini Brian. Said, Governor Sahab, I don't think this can work. Okay. If these guys can come and do this, right? You know, I'm not going to be there everywhere. Citizens are scared. Even your mm. members were not willing to, you know, intervene. Well, how is it going to stop? Okay. Mm. So, if there any misimpression that we are going to support anybody or any illegality, they should be clear. We are not going to. I mean, two cases. Uh, cases have already happened. All right, when cases mm. happen, this is the second case over here. And uh, 
they should be clear it's not going to happen he spoke to the prime minister benedi ke madam this is what has happened and the mr mr prime minister was very right she asked fakhruddin saab can you ask jamil saab has have i intervened fakhruddin saab asked me i said no no this is a call going on mm. and i am in front i said no but my supposition is there so she told fakhruddin why is he supposing has any political politician chief minister any politician of my party approached him to not say anything i said no but i'm feeling scared about it no <laughs> tell him to hold her he wants to cut an fire wants to do anything yeah he's most welcome to do it if he wants to lodge a paper against the sp please to go ahead and do it we're not going to support anybody who breaks the law or wants to do such illegal things right tell him to be comfortable if we do anything illegal his resignation would be yes. justified but here the interior minister is with me everybody is yeah. here the chief minister the fakhruddin saab said i think that should give you enough confidence i said yes sir i'm sorry i hurried yeah. it up it's my fault yeah. i should have assessed what type of a prime minister we have and what is the rule of law and the purpose of setting up this committee right and alhamdulillah you know from that day onwards we didn't have to look back you know Where, if you if you were to compare that period and the kind of support you had then and the the kind of people you're naming the quality of people that you're naming if i look at let's say the current political or the government apparatus that exists do we see the same quality of people in similar positions and could some could an organization like the cplc thrive today in the same way that it did then you yeah, know we thrived i mean i left in 2003 I'm talking about 20 years later now. No, no. Even 2000, it was not good times we had. We had the worst times. You know, 92 military operations, kidnapping maximum, three, three, four, four abductions a day, mm. children being kidnapped, businessmen being kidnapped. All right, the core commander uh, office intervening, putting me with the MI, apprehending kidnappers. General Asif Nawaz became the chief of army staff, personally monitoring the mm. cases, assisting. what 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 more could be wanted to mm. bring you know proper rule of law and all that that was all very encouraging finished kidnapping for ransom in karachi okay so you were like you were kind of like the batman of karachi for that period yeah you can name whatever you but, like but minus but, the vigilante justice but i this was you know this is like exactly like um, uh, what is guaranteed in the surah rahman so yasin you, you try to do goodness you know mm. and allah will give you the brains of seven people yeah mm. if you try to cheat do that he take away your intelligence True. otherwise a khoja businessman catching 600 terrorists hmm. 600 the, terrorists yeah, wow i mean either unbelievable the, I, i thank god the quality of terrorists is also not that good okay. <laughs> so you know a poor education I, system has had some yeah, benefits <laughs> yeah some thank god you know something like the sri lankan terrorists or the indians you know yeah. where they have you know the way they do it and the way they manipulate over there they are no less okay but um, this is what happened and and is this where you got the idea for the tracker company because you saw there was so much that car was, theft actually, and everything uh, that was much later the thefts of car then we you know we had lakh jyoti as the excise minister sin had the privilege and the this thing of the being the first city and the province to start computerization of motor vehicles that was our brainchild given we introduced computers at that time the survey of pakistan gave us the authority of having the satellite image of karachi mm. on our computers mm. undp with the economic affairs division gave us the empowerment okay and the funds to make mapping so we were the first one to make mapping we were the first ones to introduce the special crime analysis the police reforms we had excellent governors hakim said saab mm. you know mahmud harun saab fakhruddin ibrahim saab you know excellent people once the rule law of the presidential law that he had mandate of removing the sitting prime minister you know that mm. changed okay previously the governors used to be chosen by the president independently so most of those governors used to be independent and mm. neutral okay so they had the authority and the empowerment and the respect now these are people i'm talking who are very Highly you know, respected. Highly respected. You know. Absolutely. General Janze was also there. Then General Mohyuddin Heder mm. came in, right? Okay. Uh, and who could do good? You know, 
John Moynihan was the when governor was ruled the only person, mm. you know, and he brought the the water scheme so fast from mm. Garo, you know, the shortest time. Uh, and now mm. we are going for phase four up till now. It's not come, right? Mm. Okay, <laughs> for how many years? You know, started with the budget of twelve crores and has gone over a hundred crore rupees. True, and nothing is happening about it. So. This was the th- changes that made, which answers your question. Mm. In due course of time, we have tinkered the law to make matters more worse for us. People change the laws to make better movements. But in this case, yes, they get them more empowerment to political parties, and I would say they actually violated it right. instead of using it into making good governance. Yeah, they didn't do that. Having the good criminal justice system will help the political parties. It's not help anybody else. So this was the things that needed to be done o- over due course of time. Otherwise, we are a living example of mm. you know, in da- from Daniel from all these kidnappings, Daniel Pearl case, you know, murders, car thefts. So you spoke about tracker. That was after ninety five, ninety eight. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I went to America uh, for a holiday, and there I saw on the TV. You know this. Uh, low jack system. The right? low jack, exactly. Uh, very uh, yeah. uh, different system. A low jack unit we put once the car is stolen, then you activate it. It had a different system. Right. Okay. South Africa, you know, the businessmen who who had provide helicopters to the police for stolen to recover the stolen vehicles. The number of the car used to be written on the rooftop of the car. <laughs> so it could be yeah, yeah. So the helicopter could read it, yeah. which car it is. You know, right, right. anybody stealing it can't paint it immediately, right? Right. right. He cannot deface it, right? Right. How do they find it? Okay. <laughs> so the helicopter would fly, see where it is going, because the South African criminals, they were. I'm yeah. telling you, our criminals are damn good. Yeah. They would ask you to get down from the car if you just even went for your keys. They would kill you and throw your body out. Mm. That's why the businessmen funded it. So it was like CPLC, but in different context. Mm. They only did it for car thefts. Okay. We did it for everything, right? They financed for their own this thing, nothing else, right? We did, mashallah, all the citizens contributed. There was no funds given to CPLC. Later, Fakhuddin and Brian Sub gave a very small amount for some telephone, this thing, and all that. And then, of course, the other governments came. Telephone calls became free for CPLC, things like that. Mobile companies came. The citizens gave us mobiles to, you know, help them out. All the cooperation of the citizens started massively from due course of time. Right. Slowly, slowly, things became stronger. Right up till Daniel Pearl's case, you know, where Musharraf was in America and this the incident happened, and we solved the case. And FBI was the one using CPLC's office. Mm. They were sitting with us. And the chief of police would be there. Everybody would be there. We would decipher the mobile phone calls, and we develop that technology and strength. How how complicated was it dealing with the Daniel Pearl case? Because there were so many people involved, and there was so much global scrutiny in that. You will be shocked. We solved the case in one week. Wow! A blind case in one week. And Asra, how? What, what Nomani, was the reason? Asra Nomani was the colleague of Daniel Pearl and uh, thank God Daniel's laptop was not gone that day. Hmm. He didn't take it. Okay, It was at home. I gave Asra the things to do with his laptop. Okay, She sat down. She worked hard. Marianne was wife. She was expecting full time. Hmm. She was in bad shape, bad time. And Daniel Pearl, I was the last person to meet him. Right, you were the last person to yeah. meet him. He from my office, he went. Mm. So I came to know about it. Right, mm. he was sitting with me. He got a call, and he just told them, "I'm very close by, and uh, I'll be coming in another fifteen minutes." Mm. And uh, then I asked him, "Where are you going?" He says, "There." I said, "You know the people? No, there's been something fixed." I said, "Don't go. Mm. You're not supposed to." Okay. He says, you know, uh, the regional security officer of the U.S. consulate also told me not to go. I said, no, you don't meet people like that. Mm. You don't know who they are, right? You call them at a hotel, meet them, interview them, do what you want. Okay? He said, I'm going to meet so-and-so person. I said, I've never heard of this person. And you call him, he's a Peer Jelani, mm. a very famous man. Mm. If he was a famous man, I would know him. Mm. Nobody knows him. The American consulate doesn't know him. What, what, where are you going? You asking for trouble? Okay, no, no. I'm just saying. Mm. I'm trying to follow up. He's a Wall Street journalist. Mm. What is a Wall Street journalist trying to do in investigation of crime? Mm. Okay, he says I'm trying to 
Richard Reed, who was arrested in, at the Paris airport, okay, for when he was sending an SMS with a shoe bomber. It's a mm. famous shoe bomber case. He had a bomb in his shoes. True. I said, the FBI caught him at the airport. They've all caught him. They've investigated with him. They must have solved the whole case. What are you trying to do now? Right. You know? No, no, I want to see. He sent an email over here. So I went to the uh, cybernet office over here, mm. you know, to find out and track the... Mo I said, Daniel... So I that was know. the case he was trying to write Yeah, he about. was trying to... So he mm. was trying to uh, interview Jelani because uh, Richard Reed was a part of the Jelani, this thing. I said, it's all... Um, crazy, you know, theories, and he did a very wrong thing. So he went from here near the village restaurant, and then we sat down in a stranger's car and did not return home. Now, next day, I had a meeting at the Interior Ministry, so I flew off to Islamabad. So when I was in these meetings, I always put the phone on silent, naturally, you don't, you know. Mm. After I got out from the meeting at about 12 30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and I saw the missed calls, the chief of police, the U.S. Consul General, you know, Daniel Paz's house, Marianne's mm. calls. And I knew something's gone wrong. Mm. Okay. So the first person I called was his wife, Marianne. She says, and Asra came on the phone because Marianne was in no position mm. to talk. And Asra said, Jimmy, Daniel came to you yesterday. I said, yeah, he came to me. Where is he? I said, how should I know where he is? Mm. He told somebody is just coming. And he then from my, this thing, mm. he went with somebody. He was trying to go and interview some Jalani, Peer Jalani, mm. which we don't know. Then they, I said, okay, hold on, let me talk to the IG. I called the IG. He asked me what happened. I said, please take out his mobile data. Who was the person he was talking to last? Find that out. Because he was sitting with me at that time. So the easiest thing is that... Of course, trace that back. That last call yeah. at that time. That's it. When they took it out, it was a name was Amjad Faruqi, and this man had just taken the SIM that day. And there was no track of him. Mm. At that time, you could take any number of sims and not bothered and right. all that. Just Shanakti card, Jali Shanakti mm. card. Everything was, you know. You know. Thank God that you brought in computerization for vehicles. Then the criminal record justice system was brought by us. And Benazir entrusted us in 96, 97, to, uh, in 94, when the second term of mm -hmm. us, right? 93, 94, to make the criminal justice this thing. She funded CPLC to make the criminal record management. Now look at the vision of the Prime Minister. She has the Interior Ministry under her. She has the Army Intelligence, the Intelligence Bureau, the Home Ministries, and she entrusts a civil society to do the criminal record management of all the FIRs and the mm. criminals and all that. And Alhamdulillah, we took that task and we did a wonderful job. And how did you solve that in one week? Like, how were you able to identify By it? the phones. I put Asra on it. Mm. I said, Asra, let's check. What is he doing? You see, phone is a... It's a tracking device it's a for tracking you. tracking device yeah. for you. Whenever you journalists go to interview anybody at any place, please call the person whose house you're going to last. That I am very close by, I'm coming. So that if you don't, if you disappear... We go to the last call where you had made. Right. And then backtrack. Got it. You, okay? So that helps us a lot. Okay? So we backtracked Daniel Pearl's mobile data. And he had one wonderful habit of putting all this on his laptop. With every call. Okay? Now he gave us, in Islamabad he was there. Whom he met. Which hotel he met. So he gave what you a whole footprint of his entire... Yes. And then he gave us noting that this person called me that kindly delete my number. And this is my new number because that number was stolen. That gave me suspicion. Hmm. Why would he change the number? Stolen, you get a new SIM back. Hmm. Why he wants him to delete that number? That means that is his genuine number hmm. which he wants to conceal. And he has mistakenly given it to Daniel or he has made a call to Daniel with that number. Just check. And that was it. He had mistakenly used that phone and that SIM to call Daniel. And that's how you triangulated it. Yeah. And that turned out to be Omar Sheikh's house in Lahore. The man who had masterminded the kidnapping. Right. Wow. 
Wow, what a story. Interesting. And and so and 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 I had an argument with FBI and all that because they were coming here and in the meantime an email had started coming mm. in uh, asking you demanding a ransom, you know, F16 so mm. F16 mm. problem was solved. It doesn't get solved by kidnapping anybody. Mm. <laughs> It's the government this thing, right? Okay. And this must this thing and all that and then uh and I gave this number to the government and the FBI. Gave, this is the number we need to track. So they came back and this is the house of a businessman of Kashmir origin in Lahore, you know, very decent family. The Kashmir is a very normal, mm. very decent and they've got business in London and they've got this. This is the intelligence report. I said I'm not happy. This is the number. We need to know who who lives here. Mm. And they couldn't come back and FBI was not serious about it and the embassy was not serious. I spoke to the US consul general who was very very friendly with us and respected us. I said, "Look, your FBI is messing it. They are tracking an email, it might take them 6 months. I am giving them sure short places. Please tell them to concentrate on this. Get to law, find out, get all these details because Uh, we are Karachi based, Sindh based, all right. Right. And and this has become a very this thing, national thing. And uh, President Musharraf is going to America, so it's a very crucial time. Mm. The American government is going to ask our president. And every time when Benazir went, at that time you saw the PIDC killing, okay, of Americans. Every time something like this happens, and our president and prime minister is traveling to America, somebody manages to kill some Americans either involved in. business or trading or shipping things like that okay. because it's more about derailing sort of political the progress the political the friendship okay. the friendship yeah. right at the last one there must be the raw edges you see that's the whole thing right? and so it's i mean I'm, i'm as you're telling these stories about these situations it's not just about the crime right what you're what you're basically saying is it's not just the act of crime and the injustice that takes place there's so much that goes around it there's so many personalities there's so many egos there's so much additional stuff that managing that becomes a big challenge for anyone in law enforcement if they're not given a free and fair hand yeah, and to a, take and decisions and a strong institution and a strong institution america witnessed it what about 9/11 because fbi and cia never shared information mm. with this was a wake up call for them homeland security came up to be after 911 now they both share information this is the first time but in pakistan one is me just to clarify one thing i have a question daniel pearl met a very violent death and typically kidnappings are not that violent right you've dealt with a lot of kidnappings yeah, yeah. was there a reason that this particular one met with that fate you see uh, the problem was in this it became a very international thing okay and we had some terrorists from across the world who were here okay at that time okay and uh, such an action was taken but basically i blame the americans for it they had that gotama bay prison gotama bay yeah 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 right. where there was okay. yes yeah. a lot of where injustices they kept all these prisoners yep. okay and it was in a very remote area Correct. and yet the journalists would manage to reach mm. some island across with very powerful cameras zooming in into the activities of that place right okay. and they would see a stretcher a man lying on it and six people carrying it from one place to the other okay who's on the stretcher it is one of these whatever jihadis whom you mm. call whatever you have named islamists you know you have you name everybody terrorists right mm. so what message are you passing that you are torturing them so that's why they are on the stretcher right this was being conveyed at the same time when daniel pearl was because there was a trend for beheadings that took place yeah, right after that yeah right at their custody then our thanks to a very nice journalist who you know who like to make breaking news mm. and something without seeing what the repercussion would be mm. and we got a free hand for that they disclosed that he was a jew nobody knew he was a jew before that there was no such talk about it after that the others entered in this picture 
The others being who? The other terrorists who had him. Right. So, so even Umar Sheikh didn't know about it at right. that time. Right. Okay. So media played a negative role. The idea at that time was to get a good ransom amount mm. and then release it. So know. he was just abducted for ransom. Yeah, obviously. It was a money issue. No, nothing else. What is this man going to do? There was no political messaging. There was none no, of that. Nothing, nothing. They don't have the... So the, the beheading happened once he was disclosed that he's Jewish, of Jewish faith. Yeah. And that... He, the, that at that time that film was going on so the right. tempers were high yes. of the terrorists right so they said here's an opportunity for us there to return the favor and the journalist rubbed in and he was a Jew and this was a Jew this thing and 9-11 was done we sometimes really don't know, you hmm. know what are limits we cross just for that information of TV and thinking big so for that breaking news a man yeah. lost his life and that was a time when you know even Daniel Pearl's wife then came on air after the beheading. I remember that. Close to that. And the council general, U.S. council general asked me, what can we advise her? She's going on air. I said, look, if she's going on air, she's lost her husband. She should make a compassionate appeal. I have lost my husband. Okay, Don't do this to others. It doesn't help anybody. Such type of killings only kills innocent people. Don't get involved. Whatever faith, whatever you have, if they are not involved themselves in the war or whatever war you're fighting, then why you use that? Pass this message of peace and harmony. That will do more good and that will be more of a blessing. And she did exactly that. Her speech was really very good, very well balanced. And I'm happy that better sense prevailed. You see, this is what happened when you have a liaison body who thinks in a very neutral stand, right? I um, initially I was there. My colleague Nazim Haji was there. You know, my kidnapping was Mr. Sharfuddin Memon was there. A couple of my Sharfuddin Akbar Ali. I was there. All one after the other, excellent people. Okay, who helped out. You know, and they were good in the time. Memon Haji, Rafi Qasim, Murad Soni was handling a central district. All local kidnappings also equally. And mashallah, there was no casualties. See all these. We have handled over 250 cases. Hmm. Arrested over 650 terrorists. We never tortured anybody or any terrorist tried to do anything to us or, you know, even whatever it was. Whatever integration we did without. But otherwise, what is the process of integration of our police? Hang the guy by the fan, beat the hell out of him. That's it. Hmm. We don't go in. Now, when I'm talking to you, you see how much... Thought I've given how it happens, mm -hmm. how raw could be involved. Mm. Okay, even in 1995, when there were killings of by the uh, Lashkar e Jangvi and Sipe Sahaba, and you know, at the Imam Baras in the month of Ramzan, and then uh, the Union Texas people on Share Faisal. Correct. That was a time when Benazir was in the U.S. Like I yep. said, that so those were all Paul time. It was Musharraf, and at that time it was. But Daniel, what you're saying was a coincidence that he happened to be there because they just picked him up for a kidnapping. Yeah, but for after that, the president was going, so the beheading. The came. beheading came at that messaging yeah, time. That. Right. It was very, very bad, very embarrassing because once we had detected the case, the assurance was given to the president that now, mashallah, we will recover. They didn't know what was behind all this, how much it was. The death came to know only after that. Right. You know, after we learned of the beheading, right? right? So it came as a bombshell to, to even embarrassing the President Musharraf for that time, okay? So, and this happened at that time. So these clearly identified the raw agents. There was no hiding in this, okay? Mm. So, you know, I even gave this pattern to FBI. These are the type of people you need to interrogate, especially the 1995 killers. Okay, these were the people at that time they were the ones who had killed Shias and Sunnis in Ramzan. Sunnis and Shias both to make a war between this. Who would want to do it? Mm. Not a Muslim. It had to be the raw agents. This is, it's just like adding two plus two. Mm. It's that simple. If I'm of one faith, I would not like to kill my own people. True, of course. And disclose my identity. And they were disclosing the identity one to the other. And they did it. They did it with great brutalities, mm -hmm. butchered. Okay. And thank God, 
that the civil society and the people are so strong that it did not start any warfare. Otherwise, this was enough to destroy your city itself. Okay, but mashallah, the faith and the convictions of the leaders and the religious leaders were so strong and so alhamdulillah good that they didn't fall for it. Mm. They knew it was a, some foreign conspiracy. And mashallah, at that time also, the case was solved within two to three weeks. Why hasn't any other city needed a CPLC other than Karachi? No, no, it was very much needed. Even Lahore, when Najam said his brother was kidnapped, we went there. With Salim Waidi was the DIG and I. But went. Lahore did not have its own CPLC. They made. They made one after they Karachi. They made one, yes, because even Prime Minister Benazir wanted it to be done, right? So I had gone there to give a. Talk, Islamabad did not have one. Talk, no, Islamabad did not have. Uh, because uh, Islam was a different city. It's not not a part of this country. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's a completely different. Sometimes, yeah. They were not even sensitive to right. us, the right. problems that we face here. Mm, Karachi is a... Do you think Karachi still needs a CPLC or has the police evolved over time? Always needs. All cities need. All, all cities need it. I think everybody needs it. They needs it and needs good people. Uh, Lahore, when I went there, and the, when the Prime Minister Benazir had sent me to give a talk to the governor to form the CPLC and sh talk about it. And that was the time when Najam Sethi's brother was kidnapped, right? And we were really, Salim Vaidi had called us, we were trying to solve the case. And we were very close to it solving it. And when I was giving the presentation to the governor, uh, sadly the governor told me that uh, just this all excellent uh, uh, work that you have done and all that. But you know, the governor house in Sindh is a big governor house. They've got more land, they've got enough place to, you know, uh, give house the CPLC and that and all. And uh, here I don't have, I said, sir, mm. you're sadly mistaken. Just cut off 1,000 yards of your lawn mm. and make a, bit, a small office over there, mm. okay? You will get the duas of the people, both mm. the people and the Mali. He'll have less lawn to mow, <laughs> 1,000 square yards. I was shocked at his yeah. view, okay? This is the showed me the difference between a governor like Fakhruddin Ibrahim and another governor. Mm. I told you, it always has to be good, compassionate people. Mm. There are many. It depends what your task is. Do you, see, do you see citizens of Karachi like you saw back when CPLC was created? Do you see people like that coming forward today and contributing to the city? They are there because we still… I mean, we, you know, we don't see them we coming were, to the fort. We were funded by the people, limelight. everything. Give them the chance and the independence. You see, after I left, of course, they compromised, the political governors came, uh, even my CPLC members became a uh, bit out of hand. Okay, they didn't go by the past experience. You know, I mean, well, Nazim Haji was with me for six, seven years, then I continued for 15, 16 years. Okay, and mashallah, no government interfered. Hmm. Nobody tried to stop us. Where does it stand today, the CPLC? It has become highly compromised and sadly, it has been removed from the governor's control to the CM, which was not the vision of Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, no. Of a what does, how does that compromise the organization? Political. No, every, because every the CM change, controls… It will have a change. Because the CM controls the police, that's why. That's it. If he's controlling the police, controlling CPLC. Mm, so it's they, not they independent made, they anymore. Made the, they made the police order, Public Safety Commission, because the court has restored the right. police order. But what happened? No meetings of the Public Safety Commission and they made police complaint authority and police, this thing, both amalgamated. So do you see… High court sin. Right. Credit goes, okay. Gave a judgment, the Chief Justice and another judge, okay. Both gave a judgment saying restoring and removing this police complaint authority and separating it back into Police Complaint Authority and Public Safety Commission, all right? Both of them need to be separated and established and put to tar, you know? But they don't do it. You see, that's the problem, you know? They always want their rule, like I said. Mm. If they do this, they will extend their rule. Mm. Goodness attracts goodness. Once that rubs in their brains and their minds, things will change. There's so much of goodness, the people behind it. It's the most philanthropic city. Mm. In the world. True. You also had a big impact on police reforms in 2002. Do you think those reforms have made an impact on how policing is done in the city of Karachi? No, because police order was, uh, all right, uh, then again uh, amended by Musharraf from 2002, 2003, 2004, 
you know, instead of having it implemented immediately, you know, even though I requested John Nagpi was the brain behind it, who mm. did a lot of hard work with it, okay, everybody's input was massive and all that. And I told them, let's form it. Let's form the Public Safety Commission. Let it go. Mm. Okay. This is like the Senate, the half will change afterwards. Half good people will influence the other good people. Don't worry, okay. But he delayed it. So now, ultimately, when the Public Safety Commission was made, it became all, you know, uh, this thing and all that. And uh, it didn't work out. And same mm. thing like the Punjab. What they did was, uh, sadly, you know, even though I told the governor, okay, in the next 24 hours, Najam Sethi's brother will be taken out by us. Mm. We will rescue him and we'll bring him for tea with you. Now, can you imagine, this is what detection is. Mm. You should know your work beforehand, what you're going to do. Not after somebody gets killed, mm. you, you say that you have shortlisted it. And the press wants you to give you the name of the criminals immediately. Oh, we all really <laughs> don't know what we are doing, mm. you know. So, despite saying that, then ultimately they made CPLC, but the members they chose mm. were such high big guns that if they got, I asked them, one was a mill owner, mm. who's with, under whom I think seven to eight to 10,000 employees work. I told him, will you give your 10,000 employees your mobile number? Mm. That if they need you at 12 o'clock in the night, will you get up and go and help them mm. like we have done? You don't do that. Mm. They made a retired judge of the high court as the head of CPLC. He didn't start the work for six months because he wanted his house to be notified as the CPLC house. There's no such thing as a notification of CPLC house. <laughs> Karachi CPLC was in the governor house <laughs> and the district offices were all with the SSP offices and DIG offices. So the CPLC seems to have lost its way over the last, let's say, decade, two decades since you've left. How can the CPLC be restored to its former glory with the new government in place? What are some of the steps that can be taken? Yeah, there's no problem in restoring it back because, you know, Previously, yes, it was a very good asset when the chief minister and the governor were not of the same party. Okay, uh, The governor is more neutral. Okay, uh, Despite not being the same party, they were friendly. They used to see eye to eye. And even when they never used to see eye to eye, they never opposed each other like that. We, when I was there, I proposed a charter, a watchdog over CPLC also. Yeah, people don't. Na? Like police allowed us to be their watchdog, right? I, we made an advisory board, advisory this thing to oversee us. Unfortunately, after that, the governors didn't take it that way. You know, they made it, they brought in some people who were not worth on that level. The initial level that we wanted was very high level. So that if I'm also doing anything wrong, somebody should question me from the board, all right? It's not that if I just please the governor, I'm free, it's got free, okay? No, somebody should be there. So that was not there. And after that, of course, the chief ministers and the governors were loggerheads. Members to be notified, the CM had to do it because the home department was under him. Previously, out of sheer respect, Shahid Hamid Sahib was the uh, home secretary, the man who, hmm. who got murdered, right? Okay. Unfortunately, when any notification we sent the members' names and all that, you know, he was so great. He used to ask us, this list has come of members, new members with, you know, magistral powers and justice of peace. Me and Nazim Haji were given magistral powers, which we never used. I only used it once mm. in my entire 15 years. Okay. Nazim Haji Saab never used it. Justice of peace power to all the members, just to give them credibility and law, rule of law. He rang up and asked, these names have come. Have the, your, you people approved it? He said, yes, we have approved it. We have sent it. Look at that credibility. Even though the Home Secretary works under the Chief Minister. Mm. So his noting works and he goes to the CM, the CM signs. Mm. There was never any delay. Later on, after I have left, members were not being notified. Mm. The legal cover was not being given. God forbid if any member does anything, he can be challenged in the court of mm. law, he can get into serious problems. You see? So thank God people didn't know much about mm. it. Okay. And now that it has been removed from the governor's control, even though it's still in the governor house, because of the government is of the mm. chief minister, this was not required. Mm. 
Redoing it is no problem. There are a lot of good people. Okay. It's my open challenge to give it. I mean, I can just have it redone. Right. Governors have called me and asked me. I said, there's no problem. Make certain amendments in the, this thing, charter, and please, let's go ahead. Let's bring it back. There are a lot of people who want to do social work. There are a lot of people who want to do good work. Okay. Like doing the police reforms, redoing the police structure. You have to do it. Like I've been fighting for it and advising, please employ women police officers. Mm. The girls are intelligent. They're beating the boys all heads down. In medical, 70% are girls, 30% are male. In every field, engineering. Now in IT, they're coming in, okay? Make them police officers. Don't make them constables. They don't want to be constables. In cities like this, you need start from ASI. Mm. You need officers. Post them in the police station of the where the jurisdiction they live or the district they live. Okay? They're more intelligent. They're IT trained. They can solve more cases. Humanize the police stations. In Bangladesh has done it. Mandatory 35% women have to be in the police. If that is not there, you can't replace it with men. So you keep it vacant. You don't want it, right? It works wonders. It will work wonder. These women, you need now information technology to fight and combat crime. You can catch criminals like flies like we did. What did we use? We didn't have, like you said, I'm a coach mm. of business. We used our intelligence, brains, computers. And so you're saying that basically over time, you set up a better structure, you notify the right people, give them the right legal cover, bring women into a, a, the, the system with a certain percentage of women involved, especially in a city like Karachi. And then most importantly for now, using current technology. Exactly. Every, we had four districts of Karachi. I used to, we used to choose members, Khojas, Boris, Memans, Punjabis, Pathans, so Urdu speaking. Mm. People feel comfortable going to their own people. True. Please understand that. They don't have to have corruption. You can get good, honest people from all these communities. When choosing Aung Khan is, you ask the head of Aung Khan community in Karachi, I asked. Shams Lakha was there. Mm. Can you give me some good members? He gave me Murad Soni. He mm. gave me a couple of more, you know. And they turned out to be excellent. Mm. You know, excellent boys from the Sindhi, from Sindh, into Sindh, leading families. We asked Jahangir Siddiqui to give names. Mm. He gave. Good businessman. Sharfuddin Memon, who was mm. working with me and all that, right? Tariq Usman, another wonderful. So each one of them, you know, even from the Bori communities, we had so many. Then you can imagine catching crimes, following most of them, Memon's driving cars, catching criminals. Bori's <laughs> catching crimes. <laughs> if you can make turn around those families, yeah. When the family resistance is also there, the yeah. vibes are scared. Yeah. They are bro beating you. And yet, you know. You're doing this. We are doing the social work for nearly 18 hours a day. I used to work. So you seem to have replaced the CPLC bug and you've, you've devoted your time to uh, Bethel Sukun, the cancer hospital providing free treatment. Yeah, that was much later. I mean, I've just joined Bethel Sukun three years ago. Mm. It was a brainchild of Zainab Ibrahim mm. in 1999 when this was formed, uh, on the other way around. It started off as a hospice. You see, see, hospice means fourth stage cancer patients, yeah. which nobody wants to touch. Yeah. Because they're going to die, nobody yeah. likes to have a death row on their yeah. list, okay? But who's going to take care of them? Households, if you've got a three bed, two bedroom, three bedroom house even, okay? And you have a cancer patient, he needs that care, he needs that this thing. The pain, the suffering is immense. So Ms. Ibrahim saw, all the planes were there and she set it up in a house in KDA. Started from that, right up till 1999. Slowly, she kept other patients also. In 1999, a new hospital was built, okay. Uh, she and, uh, of course, with a couple of mm. her friends and Mr. Shai Tata, another businessman, you know. Mm. They got a plot, um, son-in-law, Mazar, Raoji contributed plot. So all this and uh, the Habibs did a lot. Uh, Bank Labi people, you know, and uh, Dawud Habib family mm. and all that, and Muhammad Ali, everybody of them, all the brothers, this thing, they donated, 
and even we at TPA was also a big contributor uh, for making this hospital. And it's a beautiful, all the names are there mm -hmm. of those who paid mm -hmm. and made it. So there's a kind of a sign over there. And today it's a full in, cancer. In 2009 and then it started doing cancer. So it, it worked as a hospice for about 10 years. Which is the other way around, you see, people yeah. don't touch, okay? So, Alhamdulillah. That's the harder way to do that's it. That's the harder way to do it. Mm -hmm. Very hard way. And the only way, and mm -hmm. this is the only example in Pakistan. And how many beds does it have and today? It's got 76 beds. Very good. And it's all yeah. free. And it's totally free. Not a cent is charged. Mm -hmm. Just walk in. And mashallah, it's a boutique, okay? That was done from two, uh, three years ago. The operation theater was made, okay? Mrs. Zainab Ibrahim then invited me to, you know, join the board, mm -hmm. okay? We had good people they would get busy they went off so she wanted K okay, because she's now uh, very active but this thing she wanted better management mm. and administration to be done so the new operation theater started off as a state-of-the-art theater uh, you know full of stainless steel the contamination mm. is checked everything is checked every patient has an attendant living with them okay all meals are free where is it located it's just near hill park very uh, okay got it yeah so it's very central, very, very central. easily available. Okay, very central. And uh, all the attendants That's live amazing. there. The attendants who live, we have got a roof garden for them to very relax. Nice. Coffee, tea, smoke, mm. you know, so that they also uh, can feel relax. feel comfortable. Yeah, indoor plants, paintings. You know, mm. she's got a beautiful. She had a beautiful collection of paintings. We reframed them and you know put them all across mm. this thing. Lovely boardroom, did it up again. And all radiotherapy, CT scan, MRIs are free. Surgeries, top surgeons, Shaista Khan, Dr. Shaista Khan. She retired from Maha Khan, she's doing free surgeries for us. Wow. Sh Sh uh, Shafiq Rahman, he retired from Ziauddin Hospital. He comes now and does free surgery for Vethal Sukun. We got three paid surgeons also. We have Dr. Tipu Sultan, the leading radiologist, you know, and who was So expert. you've got all the top, top... Alhamdulillah. And it's all free. All, totally free. So and the, all types of cancers. Uh, no, not all. We are going with 13, 14 types of cancers we are doing. So that's a pretty the wide some, coverage. Yeah, like blood cancer and all, very high tech, we can't right. do it, all right? right? We don't. But even this, this is 70% of the cancers that we are doing. Especially the breast cancers right. and, the, uh, and the ovarian cancers and the uterine, you know. All where, this. where do you see the future of this uh, this project, Bethel Sukur? Where do you see this in 10 years? Alhamdulillah, you see, we are not really now touching over 50 chemos a day, which is a colossal yeah, figure. Yeah, that's a lot. And it needs a lot of funding, a lot of money. You know, we need to do more targeted How do you raise funding for therapy. this? Therapy. All donations, friends, you know, I've served the city and this country so much that people are very kind when I call them up, you see, I'm asking them to join us and help us mm. do a noble cause. Everything is transparent. So Ramzan's right around the, the corner. This is a yeah. good time for donations. Yeah. Each Ramzan we do, we mm. do publicize. Of course, we don't have that much money to do the publicity like others mm. are doing it. But, you know, we need to make some changes in the laws. People can't afford three times meals. How can they pay for their medical care? Mm. Okay. Now, Everybody is allowed to collect zakat. Why? Can I understand? Zakat is a charity, mandatory on us to, for the service of Allah. It should only be given to those hospitals, those places who do completely free service. True. Whose administrative cost is the lowest and the board of trustees are not drawing a rupee of pay. So there should be some sort of zakat approved stamp that exactly an organization gets. Exactly it should be that. Mm. It should not just be asking you to fill up a form, how much gold you got, how much silver you got, whether you own a car, whether you own a motorbike. So the Center of Philanthropy does this. The PCP does a trust approval. Something like that can be done for yeah. zakat. Yeah. We are, we are certified by PCP, yeah. mashallah. We are rated very high by PCP. Right. Who say that every rupee you spend, 81 pesos from that goes to patient care, only 9% for administrative. That's very low. We have got no That's marketing amazing. person. Yeah. We have no, this thing, uh, you know, committee people. All the trustees are putting in the efforts and work. Yeah. Okay. TPL has got beautiful marketing, everything. So we use that office. Yeah. They help out. So we use our own resources, ads and all. So one thing, one, one thing I'm taking from all of your stories is you use, you've always used your own resources for the greater good. It has to be that. It's very Batman-esque. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can call that. But uh, this is one cause. Believe me, it's increasing so much. Right. Anybody earning two to three lakh rupees a month cannot afford cancer. Tell me about Pana Trust also. 
This was again a brainchild of uh, Ms. Usman Nurani. She was a very good activist, and uh, then there was Dr. Oneza, and uh, me, and then Hamid Harun also from Don. We joined in, and this was because victims of societal violence, you know, domestic violence, societal violence, karo kari cases, girls who elope with their husbands from interior sin. The parents lodge an FIR against their own daughter. you know that they've gone away from here and stolen the jewelry police goes apprehend them child marriage you know there's so many where do they go to okay so we they came up let's do it with cplc let's make a neutral place so idoru you know in fact foundation mr peer bhai had made a building for old people's home in idoru which was not being utilized well or had not been utilized so he gave us that building to set up the pana shelter the first place and how many how many people in it now it started from there hmm. in 2006 we requested the government of sin to hand over the darul aman which was famous for its notorious activities hmm. and mismanagement right and it was pathetic it was like a sub jail it wasn't a place for distress mm. for any woman to go mm. okay it was all very scary bars mm. lock ups you know like that it was mm. sadly okay least cared about least compassionate and the other thing i've noticed in your stories uh, you humanize every place you go the first thing you do it has to be and uh, involved community participation right whether the person donates like in cplc yeah cold drink companies to give cold drink stationery people used to yeah. give us the paper stationery printers used to do the free printing When you built a building, they gave the free cement. When you made windows, Alcop gave the free windows. Iron and steel was given to us by. So Dazak actually, steel. being a Khoja businessman was an advantage in your case because you came from a community mindset where every specialist from the community contributed for the greater good of the community. Exactly, and I you never, just ex, you you sort of extrapolated that at scale for the entire city. Yes, people in spend money on cement and steel. Why do you want to do it? Right. government has got so many buildings so many facilities available right. which they can give you you can They'll happily better, give it to you right <laughs> it'll make even, them look good even the tcf let me right. tell you when they came first to me i said look don't invest in cement still take over the government schools yeah. had they taken over the government schools believe me yeah. education standard in this country would have gone sky high true okay true. but they wanted the government to transfer the property to their name which right. is not possible right. even the president of pakistan cannot give the government That property to anybody in a personal now see when we were the police with cplc we get them the garden police lines yeah then we get the landy police lines then when they started this now they're going to do it on government properties had they done it from day one all the money spent on cement and steel would not have been there more children could have been accommodated all government schools could have been taken over government could have been funding partly with it the cost per child for the government is colossal right so this shelter was darul aman we took it over is now of international standard wow everybody who comes there sees it as a wonderful place for any woman in distress and let me tell you the next miracle we have justice majida who was the chairperson nadar panjwani who made the research lab at the university famous philanthropist mm. who's now a head of idru blind and deaf children mm. then i've got justice shaikh usmani dr oneza leading psychiatrist mm. okay Usman Nurani made just six board members, right? Mm. And Justice Majida was the first lady judge. She brought in the chief justice here. Now judges come here on the regular training courses, so they get exposed to the stories of these women, what they suffer. Judgments of our women cases are done within three months. Wow, That's and unbelievable. they are resettled. Can you imagine where a country where we say the judges take fifteen years and twenty years, the same judges do it? In and three give months them justice for in these two cases. months, fifteen days, three. That's a big achievement. And we have told them this is not a sub jail. The women can; they might be scared. They might want to run away. You don't do a case on mm. us. We are not here to do a jail. You want to fear some lady? Send mm. them to the jail. Mm. You send them to us. So now, even the chief justice of the Supreme Court, for those conversion Hindu cases, they send the women here, go there, live there for three months, then come back and tell me whether you want to be a remain a Hindu or you want to become a Muslim because Pana will not influence you. Wow. It will show you the true reality of life. You live comfortably there, give have time to think. You will not be allowed to meet any of these people. Okay, and you can do it. We have had doctors coming and living with us who wow. have done conversions. They help us in the office. We have our rules, 
and we don't influence anybody. That's unbelievable. I think one of the big takeaways for me is how you got you in in whether it is the Baitul Sukoon, whether it is the Panna Trust, whether it was the CPLC, just independent, free thinking, giving back to the people in the community, and I think that it's inspiring because your generation did a lot for the city. but we're not seeing the same kind of contribution come let's say from our generation for various reasons and i think your story is quite an inspiration and i just wanted to thank you for taking the time because and sharing surah, because surah rahman says this the reward of goodness is goodness itself the reward of exactly this is the examples of that in and i think everybody and i'm happy with all the people who are with me working with me right whether in cplc Right. Whether now in Bethel Sukun, the board, the trustees, the people who are donating, I give them greater honor for trusting us, giving them money, giving the wealth, and earning the blessings of Allah. And, and I think that women. is the that is absolutely the right way, the right way to live. I just wanted to thank you. I wanted to be mindful of time, and I wanted to thank you again for the opportunity to speak and share your story. I've just been enthralled listening to you. I think the stories are phenomenal, and I think it's inspiring what you've done. And if a lot of us can learn from this. and just make a small contribution to our community i think the city can be a lot better as a place to live i agree with you 100% thank Countries you once again so much potentials it absolutely. can turn around any time absolutely thank you sir thank you for the time thank you for joining yeah. us and thank you all for staying tuned to digitales we'll have more great episodes next week stay tuned bye bye